Cullen, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me. It's great to be here. Tell us a little bit about why you're running. Well, I'm running because I think we need to keep New Hampshire moving forward. You know, you look at our national politics, it feels like it's a reality show. But here in New Hampshire, we're making some good progress. Uh, I led the fight to earlier this summer restore Planned Parenthood funding in our state. We've expanded access to Medicaid health care coverage for 50,000 of our fellow citizens without having to raise state taxes. We're investing more in solar and renewable energy projects. And I know both from my background in the private sector and from serving as an executive counselor, voting and advocating for these very issues the last four years, that we have to keep moving forward. And that's why I'm running for governor. You're 37. Since 1978, there have been 10 governors elected in their 30s in the United States of America. Of that 10, six have ended up running for president. So what assurances can you give voters that this office isn't just a resume builder or that looking <laughs> on to Washington, that kind of a thing? Uh, I'm flattered, but the only thing that I'm interested in right now is standing up for the people of New Hampshire every single day. I want to do that as our next governor because I believe it's incredibly important to keep our state moving forward. I, I think that voters judge you based on your results. Um, and the results that I'm going to point to in this race are the 50,000 people who have health care coverage, most of whom who didn't a few years ago, the thousands who've gotten uh, addiction treatment services under that successful expansion of Medicaid. I was proud to cast the deciding vote. I wasn't the only one who worked on it, but a lot of us worked together. We compromised. We got it done, and our state's better as a result. I think that's the sort of leadership we want to see in our next government. But you're starting young. You're not going to rule that out for the future. Uh, I, it's nothing that I've, it's anywhere uh, on my radar. Absolutely not. Commuter rail, a big issue for you. Is that something that voters should associate you with if you're going to be in the corner office? Yeah, one of the reasons I ran for executive council was to try to strengthen our economy in part. Uh, I worked at Stonyfield Yogurt, Southern New Hampshire University, good, successful New Hampshire employers. They desperately need access to a talented workforce, and we need to bring and keep young people and young families in our state. So we commissioned an independent report on what commuter rail would cost and what it would mean for our state. The result is it would create 5,600 new jobs, help New Hampshire businesses businesses create those jobs. Uh, a million square feet of commercial real estate would be developed. That's how we drive our economy forward. Even if you never s set foot on a train, you'll appreciate less traffic on I-93 and on the Fort Everett Turnpike. And, and quickly, you're out with a new plan on the opioid crisis. Yeah. What are some key differences between you and the current administration? Well, I think what's absolutely critical, and a lot of us agree on this, is that we attack the problem, not the people with the problem. Uh, I'm uh, advocating for making that Medicaid expansion that we passed, that many have accessed care through permanent. Uh, and I think we need to fully fund the alcohol fund so that our state liquor sales uh, help us fund the treatment, prevention, and recovery services we need to overcome the crisis. Councilor Van Ostern, thank you for your time, and we'll see you out there on the campaign trail. Thanks for having me on. All right, and you can find all of our live interviews and the latest political news by going to WMUR.com.